Logdod Zip here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make your own custom blocks that you can add into Minecraft. I mean really. Look at all of these different blocks we now have access to. It's never been easier to add your own types of blocks to Minecraft and it's extremely easy to do. There's a very special custom block generator that's going to allow you to name your own blocks, choose the texture of your blocks, as well as what they do in game. Best of all, they'll also work in-game to do special things, whether it's giving off light, dealing damage to you depending on where you are near the block, and some of them you can do some really special things with, oh you know, like giving them gravity. We're going to show you exactly how to make all these blocks yourself a little bit later in the video, but a special thank you to Blue Commander, the reason that this data pack exists. It's in the description of today's video. Now let's show you some blocks that we've already made before we show you how to make them. And while you're watching, be sure to be thinking about what block you would add to Minecraft if you had the ability to. Psst, by the way, you do. And leave it in the comment in the comment section below. This first block here is the Spectrium block. It's a simple block that has an awesome color scheme that will give off light in the night. Excellent for decorative purposes or honestly whatever you want. Best part of all, when you break it, you get it right back. And you can choose to do that or not using the command system. Our next block here is Voidite, which is a type of ore that we've thought up that can go down by the void. Best part of all, you cannot mine it. It's just like a bedrock block. We've got our diamond pickaxe here, and honestly, it's just not going to happen, man. Be very careful adding in blocks that you can't break. Our next block is a beam emitter, which can act like a dispenser in game. So as you can see here, we've actually chosen the direction we want this thing to work. And if we put a lever on the side, you can see that there's no arrows inside. <laughs> it will shoot out arrows from the beam. And again, we can choose the direction that this block appears. So maybe we want the beam aiming, oh, I don't know, this way instead. Our next block is a heat lamp. This will absorb any nearby water, and it looks pretty freaking sweet as well. Stay warm, my friends. Speaking of warm, Hazardium will be keeping you on your toes because if you stand on top of this, you will have damage dealt to you, unless you sneak, in which case you don't take any more damage. Be careful, <laughs> this is not a Mario block. This next one is for all of those Portal fans out there. We have a weighted cube that you can add into your game, and this thing is literally a weighted cube in that you can make it fall. Although, we didn't do a big favor by placing it in the place where it won't fall. Let's show it to you right here instead. Check it out. Y'all ready? Falls down. Falls down. And still breakable. So now you can emulate Portal all you want in Minecraft. This is, this is fantastic. We have a memory block here that will act as though it is a chest in game. Check this out. Store whatever you please inside the memory block. We have a shoot block right here that will act as a hopper, which kind of looks like a recycle bin. We have what looks like a 3D phantom egg that upon mining won't drop anything unless you use shears. And if you do, you'll get yourself an actual phantom spawning. Oh boy, he's on fire. <laughs> and finally, we've got ourselves a grenadite block, which you'll actually be able to explode. Y'all ready? Check this out. <laughs> well, I guess we need to, we probably gotta, you know, get a flint steel. Fire away! <laughs> so as you can see, I'm not kidding. You can literally add in any block you want into game with whatever texture you want and as many as you want. So how are you gonna keep track of all these, huh? Well, that's where the block book comes into play. It keeps track of any and all blocks you've added. So as you can see in here, we've added in a few different blocks that we've yet to go over. Not only can you get the blocks by clicking on the block book interface that pops up, but you can remove existing blocks from the save system or even get information on what the blocks do. Whether it's the name, if they're directional or not, what type of block it's emulating, etc, etc, etc. Full instructions on how to add the data pack to your world will be found on the website link in the description of today's video. But as you can see, here are some that we made for the purpose of this video, and I'm going to show you us actually making them in a hot second here. For now, we'll show you the website so you can figure out how to make your own blocks. All right, so here we are on Blue Commander's Weebly page, which is linked in the description of today's video. And as you can see, we've got custom blocks generator right here. If we scroll further down, you'll notice that there is a whole section for navigation specifically that will teach you everything you need to know about what's going on with this generator. But for the most part, our video will be explaining everything you need to know. But seriously, shouts out to this handsome fella right here. Most importantly though, you'll want to go to the website for this section right here, the block generator. It's an awesome automated system that's going to make all of these blocks for you a breeze. We're going to go through this walkthrough together. 
<laughs> yes. Okay. So this button right here, this plus button, is used to add all new blocks, all block customizations, and everything else related to those blocks. After you make a block, it will be shown in this area right here, and you can select the block to modify or delete it by clicking on it. Now, you can export the block to actually get the command you need to add it to your game by pressing this button right here. If you want to edit a block, you'll click this button and then click the block in the list as it appears, or you can delete the block by clicking the X that you see right here. Most importantly, you do not want to clear your browser cache, which is, you know, smart people talk for like your history and your data files, or you will lose your list of files or blocks. <laughs> that pretty much sorts it. We are now ready to make a block. So let's do just that. We're going to start by pressing the plus here, and we'll get a brand new pop-up that will allow us to name this. First block, I want to make trash can. Oh, yeah. Next, you choose the texture. Mm -hmm. The best way to do this is to click this little question mark right here or hover over it. It's going to open up this little section here that's going to open up a couple pages for you to choose different blocks from. One is from the website known as Fresh Coal. And as you can see here, we have a whole mess of options to choose from. And you can choose a lot of different things to make your blocks out of. Alternatively, we also have the MinecraftHeads.com website, which features an equally impressive selection of block options. And as you can see up here, both options have a series of categories to make this choice way easier for you to determine. But okay, here's what I want to do. I'm going to search heads right up here, trash can, uh-huh. So we'll search that, and we'll also search it on the Fresh Coal website as well. Let's see what we got. We got a lot of options on Minecraft heads, and when it comes to Fresh Coal, we only have two. And so I think I'm going to go with this one right here, trash can. All you have to do is click the head, and if you're on the MinecraftHeads.com website like we currently are, you'll be taken to a new page where you'll get the give code. If you're on Fresh Coal, you just left click and you'll get the code. So now I've copied this code for the trash can, we're going to go back to our custom blocks generator, and we're going to paste the texture in here. The moment we do that, you'll see that it's been updated. And I had to go back as a copy of the other trash can, but now we are good to go. You'll also want to make sure you specify if you want the hat layer to show up or not because it can affect how the block looks, or at least the preview of it. Over here you can also determine if you want the block to be directional or not. A e you can check right here. Slime block head facing only one specific way, left, right, up, down, south, etc. Similar to a piston or a piece of wood. Now since we don't need it to be directional, we're just going to click next. Perfect. Now we're going to go ahead and add some block traits. This is essentially what this custom block is going to be closest to when it comes to an actual block in game. More information right here, but all you need to know is we're basically trying to choose a block that's going to act as close to how we want the trash can to work as possible. So what does a trash can do? Well, most importantly, it stores items inside. So we'll want to choose something that can store items. In this case, let's choose a barrel. It even says so right here. If you want an inventory, choose a barrel and etc. You've got a lot of different traits to keep in mind for. Do you want this block to be explosive? Do you want it to give power? Do you want it to be bouncy? Etc, etc, etc. Lots of options. For now, we've chosen barrel, and so we're good to go. Some final options here. Do you want the block to drop itself? You can opt to make it drop itself or make itself delete upon mining. Do you need a specific tool for this drop? You can choose to do that as well. What type of tool? What level of tool? Now, I don't want my trash can to require any tool. And then finally, you can choose to give it an experience when you drop it or not. Since it's a trash can, we don't really need that. So we're going to finish up our block. And as you can see right here, we have our trash can. We've selected it. And now we've clicked this button right here to get the command for the specific trash can block. And so we're going to go ahead and add this code in game right now, but let's finish off the rest of this page. So you're aware there's a change log if you want to see any changes to the generator. More importantly, if you want to get your own custom block packs, a couple of them are listed right here that will allow you to add a whole bunch of blocks in game right away. All right, so we're back in game. We're going to place a command block down, and then all we really need to do is add the command that we just wrote out into our command block. Then we'll press needs redstone over to always active, and just like that, we now have our trash can and we can place it down and it looks just like the trash can we thought it would and if we right click as you can see here it's got an entire area where we can store whatever it is we want inside 
Since we didn't require a tool to break it, we can literally just break it by left clicking on it and check this out. It will break and you'll get the contents of it as well as a trash can, or in this case, looks like we got two. <laughs> Appears to be a very minor bug. I'm sure it will be fixed in the future, especially now that we've made a video on this. Well, yo, what's up, Blue Commander? Odd, see, I broke it this time and we only got one block out of it. See, it seems very kind of random. Sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. But anyways, why don't we go ahead and make a couple more blocks? All right, back on the website, we're gonna make a few more blocks. The next one I wanna make is a little bit of a troll block. So we're gonna do exploding stone. Ooh, y'all already know what this is gonna be. So we're on the Fresh Coal website. I found the stone block that I wanna use. We've left click. We're gonna go ahead and now add that texture in. And as you can see, we do have a rough look at the stone texture. Now, let's click next. We're gonna go ahead and find TNT down on this list here. TNT, there you are near the bottom there. And just like that, it will now blow up. Now, we could require a tool for the drop. I don't think that we'll necessarily need that. I know it's technically stone, but I'd rather very easily grab it. And just like that, finished. So now we have exploding stone. We'll look at all these in a second. For now, I wanna make another block. I think I wanna start backwards and see if we can find a block that we wanna use on here instead. Wow, and they have a whole plethora of options. Look at all the different Pokemon. I'm pretty sure these are all Pokemon. Look at this. Ooh, I know. We're going to choose this bush right here. We're going to make a thorn bush that you take damage on when you stand on top of it. So here's our rose bush. We'll click next. Since we want to take damage when we stand on it, we'll want to choose a magma block because that already has one of the traits. And we'll want to make you need shears in order to break it. We're gonna name this new block Reactor, and it's gonna be just like a beacon. I've already chosen the one we want here, this Chinese Lantern. It's obviously not a lantern in this case, but I really like how it looks, and I think it'll look cool with a beacon light coming out of it. And so we'll choose beacon from this drop-down list, and we'll make a pickaxe required in order to pick it up. So now we've got three more blocks to add in. And just like that, we've got ourselves our exploding stone, we've got ourselves our rosebush, and we've got ourselves our Reactor. If for whatever reason you end up losing those blocks and you want them again, just go back to your block book. And as you can see, they're all right here. So you can click get, get, get. And just like that, they're back in our inventory. So let's go ahead and place down our exploding block. And as you can see here, looks like a stone. It's kind of pixely, but you know, these things happen sometimes. And if we right click with a flint and steel, it blows up instantly. <laughs> Don't you just hate when you blow yourself up? We've also got a couple of rose bushes we can place down. Look at these, they're lovely. I like how kind of they look 3D. And if you were to stand on top of them, well, you'll take damage. It does sound like you're burning, but hey, beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> We've made a custom block. And look at this. We need shears in order to properly collect it, which we can do right away. You see, we shear it, it gives us what we want. Any other way, you're not gonna get your block. See, watch, check out what happens when we try and break it now. It's no good. Finally, we're gonna place down our reactor, which is actually a beacon on top of some blocks in order for it to activate right away. And look at that, it's coming out of the top there. Why don't we go ahead and switch things up to nighttime right now and see how this thing looks. I love it, this is cool. It's a custom looking beacon. And you can add it all, as well as every block you've seen in today's video, to your worlds right now. 